When I was 14, I planned my wedding. This one's wife. Told you he was coming for her. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. As I foreshadowed a number of days ago, Dan Wooten, now having an independent platform, is gunning for this one's wife and Prince Harry. I told you that would be the case. He's never liked her. He's never been particularly impressed with him. And the now the fact that he is freed from the suspension of GB News and is no longer employed by them, he is able to give full vent to his opinions and observations. He does so very quickly with an article that was written by Dan Wooten on his new outspoken platform with the title How Prince Harry Was Involved in My Sick Takedown by a Convicted Criminal at Byline Times and Why the British Mainstream Media Gave In to Those Dark Forces. The Duke of Woke played a critical role in cancelling me for reporting the truth about his wife. Thus, the clear indication from Dan Wooten is that he spoke the truth about this one's wife and of course did so, portraying her in an unfavourable light because much of what she does results in that being the case. Harry, naturally exhibiting loyalty and emotional empathy for his wife, seeks to defend her. He does so with a slavish devotion as a consequence of the way that she has manipulated him. And then he takes action which causes a problem for Dan Wooten. But Dan Wooten isn't going to take it lying down, as we now see with this particular article. Why would Prince Harry have such close links to a discredited, hard-left blog peddling lies on a daily basis and paying convicted criminals to act as journalists? It's a prospect so unlikely that it seems hard to believe. But I have learned the disgraced Duke, now one of the most unpopular British royals in history, after viciously turning on his own flesh and blood, and the Commonwealth itself, has cultivated a private working relationship with Byline Times to pursue one goal, taking down his enemies in the British media. It's no surprise to know that I was top of that list. For a lengthy period after this one's wife first entered the royal family, there was silence from the infamous Royal Rota, reporters officially sanctioned, to cover the monarchy with official access, over the appalling behaviour of the Sussexes behind the scenes. Ironically, given Harry's later claims about constant leaks, Courtiers were desperate to try and cover up the growing feud for as long as possible, conscious that the American Duchess was intending to weaponize false allegations of racism and were successful in doing so. But I blew that cosy consensus apart. It started by breaking the story of this one's wife's row with the late Queen over which tiara she should wear on her wedding day, sense of entitlement, argumentativeness, see parts pass him. Continued with her fallout with the Princess of Wales how, over how she spoke to staff, bullying, lack of emotional empathy, and concluded with the revelation of Megxit, first to Canada in January 2020, and then to California just weeks later. My reporting as executive editor of The Sun over that tumultuous period in royal history exposed Harry and this one's wife for what they really are, nasty grifters doing all they could do to cause difficulties for the late Queen. Even when she was eventually dying of blood cancer, knowing full well that they were always going to quit the royal family to seek a fortune in the US as woke warriors. I know that was always the plan. She demonstrates the sense of entitlement, the lack of accountability by failing to exhibit service, and the deceit, essentially, grifting behind the Queen's back. That journalism was never to do with my personal feelings about Harry and this one's wife. In fact, I had hoped the marriage would work, and openly supported the new Duchess being allowed to carve out her own niche within the firm, taking into account her unique Hollywood background. But the couple never wanted success. Quite the opposite. Once my brave editor at The Sun, Tony Gallagher, allowed me to report these true stories in dramatic fashion, despite official denials by the Sussexes, 
denial, the first line of the twin lines of the narcissistic defence, the floodgates eventually opened, and the raw stenographers working for the legacy newspapers, like the Daily Mail and Daily Telegraph, caught up a few months later. Not that Harry and this one's wife didn't use every possible tactic to shut me up, nullification of threat to control. They made complaints to the newspaper regulator Ipso, leaned on other royals to complain about me to my editor. Gallagher, a secret Republican, didn't give a damn. Unleashed their odd-looking little attack dog, Lieutenant Omid Scobie, turned former celebrity acquaintances like James Corden, arsehole, against me, threatened to file a lawsuit, use of threat, falsely claiming I'd broken the law while reporting on them, false accusation, and brazenly attacked me in public. Harry used the hilarious phrase, sad little man in his autobiography Spare. But nothing was going to stop me reporting the truth, so eventually, Dirty Harry succumbed to dark forces. The gullible bloke had been captured by the self-obsessed wannabe celebrity lawyer David Sherborne on a one-man mission to destroy the British free press, who who unsuccessfully represented Johnny Depp in his high court case versus me, and a relationship with Byline Times was soon born. Now, Byline are the sort of outfit so dodgy that no one should take a word of what they report seriously. Run by the thoroughly unpleasant fake news merchant Peter Dukes, it has launched obsessive campaigns against tabloid journalists hired by Rupert Murdoch, women's right campaigners like J.K. Rowling, and true conservative British politicians for many years. But most of their so-called scoops are ignored because their claims are so preposterous, usually based on false information provided by discredited sources, driven by malice with significant axes to grind. Dukes is an unsavoury character who is idolised by leftists like James O'Brien, Carol Vorderman, Marina Perkis, and in recent years, Prince Harry. Even more bizarrely, the royal connection comes via a convicted criminal called Dan Evans, who avoided jail after admitting to being one of the most prolific phone hackers in history by turning on his former colleagues. I had the misfortune of working with this shady character for a brief period at the News of the World, I joined in 2007, after the legendary Sunday newspaper's former royal editor Clive Goodman had been jailed for phone hacking, and was assured the practice was long over. I've not broken the law during my years in journalism, and specifically testified to the Leveson inquiry in 2012 that I've never hacked a phone, so my conscience is clear. Indeed, There was only one man stupid enough to continue breaking the law by illegally hacking into the phones of celebrities after the practice had been exposed and Goodman had gone to jail, Mr Evans. It was an utterly pathetic decision that shows the true character of the cretin. Why not go and be a proper journalist by cultivating contacts and uncovering wrongdoing? I can never understand that. His selfish, illegal behaviour cost many honourable journalists their jobs and ended a great British Sunday newspaper tradition. He was suspended around 2010 when his behaviour came to light, and I gladly never spoke to him again. But by 2023, he was attending the High Court alongside Prince Harry in his landmark civil case against the Daily Mirror, a dying left-wing rag specifically targeted by Harry to try and damage the reputation of another This One's Wife truth speaker, Piers Morgan. See parts pass him. On the first day Harry gave evidence, Evan slipped out of court just moments before the Prince. I can reveal today that Harry has spent months negotiating with Byline Times about sitting down with the blog for a tell-all interview. It's astonishing that the fifth in line to the throne would be considered talking to such a disgraceful publication that is totally unregulated and reliant on convicted criminals for some of its reportage, unless, of course, they had been conducting his dirty work. Which brings me to Byline's July 2023 takedown of me by Evans and another failed tabloid journalist and broadcaster called Tom Latcham, whose biggest claim to fame was hosting the Midnight to Dawn Graveyard shift on Talk Sport for a couple of years. Despite their proclamations, Evans and Latcham were no British Woodward and Bernstein, more like Dumb and Dumber. The pair ran a series of completely untrue hit pieces about me relying on testimony from my deranged and abusive ex-boyfriend, now a hard-left activist who had spent five years concocting a fairy tale, backed up by no evidence whatsoever, but specifically designed to destroy me, despite the fact we broke up 11 years earlier, 
and two convicted criminal fantasists who had attempted to extort money from gay men in exchange for silence. Their tactics were appalling. It wasn't public interest journalism, as they claim, but a modern-day witch trial using social media to try and shame me. They rang every former colleague and friend telling egregious lies about despicable criminal acts I had never committed to try and entrap people into backing up the stories of their fantasist sources. They incorrectly quoted sources to fit their narrative and then ignored their complaints to the editor. They wasted a sickening amount of police time and even now refused to accept they were completely misled, despite me being exonerated in two investigations by the Metropolitan and Scottish Police. There is already an unreported Met Police investigation ongoing into one of the false complaints against me, who is a dangerous fantasist, who has already served jail time. This bloke is the new Carl Beach, and the despicable James O'Brien was sucked in once again. But sadly, given the toxic cancel culture now engulfing the British mainstream media, Byline's tactic to taint my reputation was successful. The Daily Mail, which is secretly terrified of the unhinged campaign Harry and this one's wife is waging against them, immediately paused my column, which until that point had been the most read on their website internationally. They didn't wait to see any evidence or allow me to put my case. They bowed to these criminal friends of Harry within hours. Emboldened, Byline didn't stop their campaign of false reporting. It culminated in a front-page story claiming my reporting of Megxit had been illegal because it relied on information provided to me by a key aide working for Prince William, with whom I'd had a previous relationship. It was only once you got deep down into their 10,000-word missive that they had to admit such untrue claims had been reported to the police and the royal family years earlier, were thoroughly investigated and then dismissed, because there was no basis to them whatsoever. I will never apologise for speaking to whoever I possibly can to break royal stories, when the Rota journalists are happy to regurgitate briefings from communication secretaries. So yes, I was speaking to people close to the late Queen, Charles, William and Andrew too. But also Harry and this one's wife. The idea that they were not playing the exact sort of games in terms of media briefings is farcical. Even my Megxit World exclusive contained information fed directly to me by their official staff. Mr. Wooten confirming, as has long been suspected and understood, that this one's wife, and Harry, engage in the leaking of information to make themselves look good, to criticise other people, to nullify the threat to control that they pose, whilst then complaining about information being leaked about them. So Byline wasn't undertaking journalism of any form. It was a campaign to stop me ever working in the British media again. Latcham admitted as much in a tasteless Instagram post. I appreciate that this is a complicated story and it could be seen as very inside baseball. I'm also convinced no one in the corrupt British MSM will dare follow it up because they are determined to protect each other. But Harry, collaborating with the Byline Times against his media critics, matters. So much of their coverage had the stench of being driven by Harry, including their demands now for Piers Morgan to be investigated by the Met over phone hacking two decades ago, the last thing our overwhelmed law enforcement should be doing, by the way, even though the Sussexes are now on the outer of the royal family, it shows the power of the British establishment to neuter and silence critical voices. Harry and this one's wife have now played a critical role in cancelling me for reporting the truth in my last four MSM jobs, First on ITV's Lorraine Show, then The Sun, The Daily Mail, and yes, even GB News. That's why I'm here, proudly independent, with a daily online news show launching later this year. I would continue to break stories that both the Sussexes and the royal family would rather stay covered up, and there is much to expose. The MSN is no longer prepared to tackle the most difficult stories, about Harry and this one's wife, because they know his legally trigger-happy nature, backed up by the millions left to him by his late mother and great-grandmother, could result in financial ruin. Thus, this would in part explain why many of you often find yourself scratching your heads and thinking, given the rumours that circulate about Harry, and particularly this one's wife, 
her allegedly being a yacht girl, the suggestion that the pregnancies weren't legitimate, that she was engaged in the bullying of staff, etc. Why isn't that the mainstream media publishing these stories? Surely they've investigated the allegations of her gluing a girl's eyes shut when she was at university, and yet nothing is said about it. It would appear that, according to Mr. Wooten, the reason is is the mainstream media doesn't want to tackle those difficult stories because they're fearful of being sued. However, he goes on to state, if they think they've silenced me, however, Harry and this one's wife have got another thing coming. My reporting has always been completely honest, above board and legal, and it will not stop. I told you that Dan Wooten was coming for them. He's already started, and he's made it clear with this article where he explains why he has been the victim of a smear campaign and how that came about as a collaboration between Harry and Byline Times because of the need to punish Dan Wooten because he was repeatedly critical of this one's wife and Harry. It also makes it clear that he's got them in his sights and he'll continue to take pot shots at them. This is naturally problematic for this one's wife as it's a threat to control and it all depends upon the extent of the platform that Mr Wooten is able to establish for himself as an independent individual, not part of MSM. He now has the freedom to speak his mind and that is going to be problematic for this one's wife. However, it just depends how wide his platform becomes. There are plenty of people that will want to hear about what he has to say about this one's wife. And furthermore, if he's going to report on the matters that mainstream news won't, then there'll be plenty of people that'll be ready to amplify that. I, for one, will be looking at the evidence that he puts forward to see how that fits with her behaviour vis-a-vis her narcissism. So it'd be very interesting indeed to have this further information conduit, and apparently a reliable one, to see how it impacts upon this one's wife. As I explained to you, he was coming for her, and it started. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.